Hey there, listeners! Hey there! Welcome to Rhapsody in Reverie, episode 13. Oh, can't do it, gotta go. Yeah, bye guys. 13, 13's an unlucky number, man. I can't sit here. Like, I need to leave. But also, can you get up first? Who are you talking to? If you, if you leave first, it won't be bad luck for me. Because, you know, like, the, the whole 13 dining table, whatever first person to get up is, like, cursed or whatever... Are and you I, trying to vet me? No, I'm trying to hex you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> is here episode 13 yes it's gonna be a good one it's lucky a, 13 it's an episode that's near and dear to my heart for reasons that will become clear reasons she has been ashamed of until now all right um <laughs> that was unnecessary i'm kidding all right. <laughs> uh, anyway why don't we kick things off with our Hint recap. Hint master. Hint master. Hint master. Hint master is here. <laughs> I love that little goblin. How are you doing, hint master? Hint master, good. Wow, Wait. you're actually talking to it now. <laughs> I mean, we pay it. You don't pay me. Wow. He's the podcast goblin. We can't not talk to it. What you're witnessing right now is a break in sanity. We can't just not talk to the podcast goblin. It's sitting right here. Is the podcast goblin going to do its job at least? Maybe. (laughs) The hint from last week was that this band's name comes from a rare manuscript titled The Argus Apocryphix. See, I kept it together. I'm very proud of you. You did okay. Oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Hitmaster. (laughs) That was our hint. And who is the artist that we are talking about? Well, we should give them a 30-second countdown, because this artist is 30 Seconds to Mars! 30, 29, 28, 26. Stop. Get some help. (laughs) And we once again had a correct guess for our artist this week. Yes! From last week, the last week reigning champion, Sebastian, does it again! 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 Dude, you are hitting it out of the ballpark. To quote a Mr. Khaled, another one. Another one! <laughs> but that is awesome. Thank you so much for, for playing everyone who guessed, even those who guessed wrong, which were most of you. And special thanks to Sebastian, who is just the Rhapsody and Reverie MVP right now. We'll see if he can make it a three-peat. We'll see. If you make it a three-peat, Sebastian, something special will... We'll have to think of something special for you. That sounded weird. That sounded that sounded weird. so weird. But trust me, we're just we just want to reward. Uh, you're gonna beat the hitmaster. Hitmaster's gonna be out of a job. <laughs> it's the thirty seconds to Mars episode, and I, I I don't know. Should we start with how we got to know them as a band? Yes, we shall. Can I go first? Because I feel like your story is going to be more meaningful and I want to get mine out of the way so that they can concentrate on the meat of the stories. I mean, all stories are meaningful. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I feel like, I feel like, 
Mine is just, like, ridiculous, so. You can go first. Yay! So, I was unaware of them as an entity for a really long time. I don't know why it never clicked with me that the people behind The Kill were a band I could go follow and care about. Because for a while in middle school, like, I, I, I knew of the music video, and I knew the song vaguely, but it, it was never, like, ingrained in... I don't know, my everyday listening, which is dumb because it's a great song and the music video was bomb. I loved it. But no, the first time I started paying attention to 30 Seconds to Mars <laughs> was um, when their song Kings and Queens was used in the commercial for the cartoon Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul trailer. The owl movie. <laughs> Does anyone else remember that really trippy owl movie? It was a great movie. I didn't see it, but I Oh, you didn't see it? No, I I do remember the trailer of being like, it's 30 seconds to Mars, yeah. Yeah, and like, I really liked the song, especially paired with all these owls who were clearly at war, Lord of the Rings style. It fits so well, and then that, that prompt, after I saw the movie, of course, that prompted me to go look it up and by then that of course was their third album so I don't know I, I was late to the party so thank you Legend of the Guardians <laughs> shout out to you guys great movie by the way like is it weird yes is it awesome also yes how did you become ingratiated into the world of 30 Seconds to Mars this is an interesting one for me because if you know me, if you've known me for a while, you know just how much I loved 30 Seconds to Mars back in the day, to an embarrassing degree. But <laughs> as such, it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly how it all started, but I think it has something to do with Cobra Starship. Because the lead singer of Cobra Starship, Gabriel Saporta, mm -hmm. was actually one of the faces featured on the This Is War album cover. Oh! Because, for those of you that don't know, when 30 Seconds to Mars released their third album, This Is War, they did this uh, contest kind of thing where they had people send in pictures of themselves. And then they used, like, 2,000 of those pictures as album covers. And they just kind of sent, it, sent them out into the world. Um, so you could pick up an album with a different cover at every store. Like, so... Interesting. Um, yeah, I think there are some other celebrities that also got their faces on an album. But Gabriel Saporta mentioned that he was gonna be on it and I was a huge Cobra Starship fan at the time of the release of This Is War, which was two thousand nine. Yeah. So I I want to say that that's the origin, but I also feel like I may have discovered them a little bit earlier. But it was around two thousand nine and that was when I sort of first was consciously aware of who they were. And then I also had friends that were getting into them too around the same time. And we sort of encouraged the obsession oh. within each other, I guess is the best way to say. We would start talking about the music and we would mm -hmm. get really, really excited about it. This was also around the time when I was uh we child on tumblr mm. so i did a lot of embarrassing fangirl things oh dearie uh, outside of that what it really boiled down to was the music spoke to me at that time i i needed them and they spoke for me and that's why i was so so passionate about them and their music because I loved it so much. Yeah, I think I mentioned this in the 1975 episode. I have a list of six bands that have fundamentally changed my life. The 1975 is one of them. 
Fun mm-hmm. is one of them, and 30 Seconds to Mars is another one. Ah, so we've covered the big three. Yeah, or we will have. Three, yes. They, they mean a heck of a lot to me. I know people say this, and it sounds cliche, but I would not be here if it weren't for them. And that is 100% true. So this is a... This is a big, yeah, this is a big one, guys. <laughs> it's a big one. I'm curious to know what your sort of exposure to 30 Seconds to Mars is in terms of, like, what albums you've listened to. I, I was familiar with A Beautiful Lie because of The Kill, which was the big song for emos. This Is War was another one. That one was really good. Uh, I think that was the first one I listened to front to back, Mm -hmm. was This Is War. A Beautiful Eye I listened to after when I realized, oh, they did the kill! And then I was was like, huh, great! Um, I listened to Love, Love, Faith, and Dreams with you, because you were excited. I remember because that was during your freshman year of college, and you were like, you have to listen to this. Okay, so you didn't listen to their first album then. Uh, not to my knowledge, unless it's gonna be another one where, like, a a song comes on and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have another epiphany where it's like, oh, I did that. The big song from that album was Capricorn, a brand new name, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is the first song on the album. A Beautiful Eye, This Is War, and Love, Lust, Faith, and Dreams is definitely sort of where my center is, which is helpful for this discussion. Because, like, look, at the start, when they released their first album, I was in third grade. Yeah, we were very young when that album came out. So in order to listen to it, we were going back in time. And when you listen to the first record, it definitely is very kind of new metal, almost. All right. It definitely feels like a late 90s, early 2000s record. But all the songs on it are are still really good. I will shout out Buddha for Mary. I forgot how good that song was. <laughs> I I listened to it today and I was like, oh man, I really love this song. Amazing. If you are listening, you've never heard the first album, if you're going to give it a chance, at the very least, listen to Buddha for Mary. I will. Because... That song is, like, peak emo. (laughs) Peak. More emo than The Kill? No, it's definitely not more emo than The Kill. Because The Kill is quintessential emo. Yeah. But Buddha for Mary has the sort of, like, snark of the scene. Okay. That I think is very, very telling of the time. Gotcha. So I definitely encourage everybody to listen to Buddha for Mary and just really get into the emo emo scene kid vibes from back in the day. Let out your inner scene kid. That's what we're gonna do on this episode. <laughs> but I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> that that's what we're in for today. Darkness. Question then, does it make sense that they toured with Puddle of Mud for their first... The first tour they ever did, they opened for Puddle of Mud. Does that surprise you? It makes complete sense. Okay. 100%. So that's the kind of emo then that was their first album, and then they turned into uh, mid-aughts emo for A Beautiful Life. Yes. Okay. Their career has evolved definitely over the years in terms of sound. Well, yeah, like, they started out with, I don't know, according to you, Puddle of Mud-esque depression. Mm-hmm. Scene kid depression. And then they moved steadily into uh, their what now? Alternative rock? Uh, well, I mean, America is a yeah. whole other beast that almost has more of a pop rock kind of feel. Yeah. But the songs... I think I think Kings and Queens made the top of the U.S. alternative charts. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like they're making a shift from uh, grunge emo to emo emo to alternative emo. Alternative, alternative. 
alternative pop. Mm -hmm. So the next album is going to be super bubblegum pop. Calling it now. (laughs) And if you let me down, Jared Leto, if you let me down, I want to cover a bubblegum bitch on my desk by tomorrow and get me pictures of (laughs) Spider-Man. Oh, gosh. We'll see. Stay tuned. (laughs) All right. We can talk now then about A Beautiful Lie, which is a beautiful album. Yeah. It's very wonderful. So I, This Is War is actually the first album I listened to front to back as well. Ooh. And I also had to go back to listen to A Beautiful Lie. This episode's a hard one for me to express just how important these songs are to me. Every single one of these songs matters. I obsessed over all the music videos. Mm-hmm. I obsessed over all the lyrics. I, I wrote papers about these lyrics. Oh. <laughs> Seriously, my senior year in high school, at the end of the year, we had to do a big, like, senior project where we, like, write a paper about a topic that we choose and then give a presentation about it to, like, a panel of judges. And my paper, I low-key wrote about Jared Leto. <laughs> <laughs> so... I dissected this album. I listened to these songs every day because I felt alone and I just wanted to run away. And with songs like Attack, it just felt like somebody actually got it. Somebody actually understood what it felt like to have to fight through that anxiety and anger and frustration. Jared Leto's voice has so much emotion in it. Battle of One is a particularly important one for me. I listened to that song a lot my senior year of high school. It, okay. Um, it was on my 2012 playlist that I made mm. at the beginning of the year. I had just gone through 2011, which was junior year, sophomore year. And both of those years were really, really tough for me. Like, emotionally, I was very, very, very not okay for a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't always know how to, like, express that out into the world and reach out and, like, talk to people about it. So music was all I really had to deal with those feelings. And by the time I got to the end of 2011, I was in this place of just really, really wanting to find the strength to just, like, change things, change my life and break out of it. And so there are a lot of songs that helped me do that. I've talked about many of them in other episodes that we've done. But Battle of One, I think, is the first song on the 2012 playlist. Because that is the song you listen to when you are ready to tear shit up. Ooh. Like, that it is, is... It honestly really is. Yeah, it, it's just... It's loud, it's aggressive, those drums are the perfect sort of post-hardcore emo drums that were really popular <laughs> during Shout that Shout out to time. Shannon! Shannon Leto on the drums on that song impeccable jared leto's voice on that song is pure pure angst and rage real song i love it this may be a bit of a digression but honestly that's one thing i've admired about this band since i actually started listening to them actively was that his voice really is the embodiment of pure angst and it sounds good you know when you have a musician who just they, they're full of angst, but there's also no melody to them as well. Mm-hmm. Jared Leto's voice ha- sounds quite beautiful when it's, oh, yeah. when it's put through the angst punch machine, whatever. It, he actually does a very good job of conveying that emotion in a way that is really aesthetically pleasing. Mm-hmm. 
And that's something I have I have always admired about the sound of their band. Yeah, definitely. Because he doesn't sound overly whiny in any of his songs. No. And yet he's still able to portray a profound sense of sadness at times. Not all the time, but sometimes. He's he's able to portray more than just sadness, just all these different epic sort of feelings, extremes. He goes through the spectrum of of despair and sadness and yearning and hope all at once. And it's 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 interesting that he's able to do that. Yeah. And Battle of One is such a great example of him channeling a sort of sense of despair into, I guess, a proactive and defiant way. My back's up against the wall, but I'm going to somehow get through this and just charge ahead. It's beautiful. Yeah, I I really needed that when I was going into my senior year. I listened to that on repeat so many times. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just, you can't not be hyped to that song. You can't not feel like you have power. You can't not feel like you have agency when you listen to that song. True. Because it's there to say, you are fighting for you. And you're going to win. We can't not talk about the kill. No, we cannot. <laughs> that's my. I'm going to come out early and just say that that's probably my favorite song they've ever done. That one's so fun <laughs> to sing along to. It <laughs> is. It is quintessential emo. And you can't sing it normally. You really can't. I've tried to sing it like how I... Because I, I, can, I can sing! But when this song comes on, it's I, I suddenly lose all, all of my talent, all of my ability, and I'm just, like, shouting Jared Leto style. <laughs> yeah, like, like my, my, my jaw goes lower than it normally would. It's like, you have to just be over-the-top theatrical when you sing that song. There's no way around it. Am I the only person that, like, reenacts him in the music video? Oh, you're not. <laughs> That's one of my favorite songs to like, you know, those like little scenarios that you daydream to. Mm-hmm. That's one of my top, if I'm in the mood to just disassociate for a while. It's a good, it, it really is a good <laughs> disassociation song. I'm, th- I'm throwing like somebody forgetting. against the wall. Usually it's me, me at myself. Get your life together, bitch. <laughs> that, the iconic scene where he pushes himself against the wall. Can I just be honest? That was really hot. Yo, yeah, well, it's incredibly hot. <laughs> That's... Yeah. And I have to say, I loved the shining thing that they were doing there. Yeah, it's the very, whole... very smart. Very well done. Yeah. So true to the source material. Even the dog. Man. <laughs> Even Which, the honestly, dog, man. scariest part of that whole movie. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I agree with you. It's quintessential emo. It's it's got the theatricality. It's got the all black, all black everything. <laughs> like, Does he have guy liner? Yes. Does he? Have, he's got the guy liner. Extreme guy liner. <laughs> the raccoon eyes guy liner. You know. Yeah. Even the, but even just the lyrics, like it. It's so, mm-hmm. so emo in the best way. It's a very powerful song, and I'm, I'm almost not sure what kind of emotion he intends for me to feel, because sometimes I feel a variety of things. Like, I can feel empowered to beat the shit out of myself, or I can feel empowered, you know, to conquer something else that's a bigger problem. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you do your worst kind of a thing. Uh, or, it's, or it invokes a sort of, I'm really upset. And here I am drowning in my sorrow. <laughs> yeah. I really, I know we spent too long in the kill already. I would just like to point out that I find the title very interesting. Especially in relation to 
the theme of the music video where they're all confronting versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's almost like they're, they're killing pieces of themselves, not necessarily to be reborn. Well, it, no, I take that back. To to rise from the ashes of this self destruction to to become harder stronger like what what is he what is he saying in the chorus like you know come break me down bury me whatever uh, he's killing part of himself he's not letting other people do it yeah and it's 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 a re it's it's a death and destruction that is a choice and he's not letting the world do it to him and I find that interesting. This is War, and this is it. This is the album. Yeah, it is. Honestly, this is uh -huh. the album. I refuse to listen to anybody who does not name this one as their best album, kind of, because it's just perfect. Yeah. It's, so it's very well. It's very well done. This is an album that, when I listen to it, I listen to every single song. Mm-hmm. I, I loved every single one. This is also the tour that I went to to go Ooh. see them live. Um, nice. Because this was around the time where they were, like, touring like crazy. They ended up in yeah. the Guinness World Book of Records for the most consecutive shows. They did, like, 300 shows. Yeah, yeah they were they were once voted the hardest working band of yeah. I forgot what year it was, but honestly, props to you guys. Like and and they deserved it. Like the their tour their show was great. It was an ultimate dream of mine to get to see them live. And it was crazy because I went with like it was me and like three or four of my friends. And we all okay. went and one of my friends got to go on stage <gasps> during this show. What? I kid you not. Oh, I've been, I've been angry. I would have been like, that's not me up there. Oh, no. I was so hyped. I was like, yes, girl, you get on that stage. She got to go on for Kings and Queens. Oh, and my God. The best song. It was so great. I, oh, my God. It was so cool. That was such a good show. That was one of the... We, we all just, like, when it was over, we were like, oh, my God, I can't believe that happened. This is amazing. This is the greatest. I mean, like, he had a bunch of people come on stage at once. Um, so it wasn't like... That's really cool. Her, but, like, it still so awesome. This is for the entire era is just, like, the best era and that's true. Just my favorite era. I love everything about this album. I love all the music videos. I uh, yeah, I love the tour from start to finish. Every song on it just hit me right in the feelings. Night of the Hunter, I have to talk about cuz that is mm -hmm. my favorite song on this album like hands down. It is the song that I go back to consistently. And it's such... It's another one of those songs that gets you charged up. That's why 30 Seconds to Mars is on my list of six bands that have changed my life. Because they're the band that gave me the strength to fight against everything that I felt controlled and buried mm -hmm. by. Yeah. They were the band that spoke to me and told me, hey, you don't have to be powerless. You're fighting a war and you can win. Nice. And Night of the Hunter is definitely one of those songs that was like my battle cry. I would 
listen to it in classes when I should have been working. (laughs) And I would do it just because I couldn't stand to think about anything else. And it's just, it's a great song. It's a little pretentious with the French, and I love it. This is also, it, the song shares the name with the second best film of all time, The Night of the Hunter, mm. which is a, a it's a, a noir, and I don't know if you've ever seen it, but not. that's, that's, the song made me think of it when I first heard it. It, it's, uh, it's a very interesting film. If you haven't seen it and you like classic movies, check it out. It's, it's pretty dark. <laughs> um, it's about a... A serial killer who used to be a minister. So... <laughs> the bull. Yeah, yeah. It's... Dude's got tattoos on his hand. One spells out love, one spells out hate. It's like, well, alright. <laughs> uh, part of me was like, it would it would be something that you would do to name your song after something. <laughs> after a classic noir thriller. <laughs> It works. That song itself is thrilling. Like, whenever I listen mm-hmm. to it, I always sort of have, like, a movie playing in my head. Some sort of crime drama. I Honestly, I always think about The Woods when I listen to that song. Ooh! You know, like, interesting! I, I, it's almost like a Hunger Games-esque, like, movie playing in my head. That's interesting, considering the song, the, or the movie, is about a serial killer. Hunting women, so. Ooh. All right. I mean, Jared. <laughs> Jared. <laughs> but I mean, that's a great song. It's it's uh a little spooky. Yeah. Not good. It's 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 good. Got a good vibe. Um, we need to talk about kings and queens. That is an inspiration. It is. Like, it just makes you feel so happy, and it makes you feel Mm -hmm. so self-assured. Perhaps it is because my my impressions of this song will forever be tied to owls, but the song... (laughs) The song makes me believe that, like, er, the imagery I get from it is, is flying, or, or that you know you've jumped. You're doing that the superhero thing where you jump off of a high place and you plummet, and then at the last minute you pull up and you're flying. Yeah, that's what that song makes me feel like. It's definitely got that airy quality to it. It it's triumphant. Yeah, it's the song at the end of the movie, at the critical moment. The eleven o'clock hour. Yep, when everything. But everything is about to turn around. Yep. And (laughs) it's just, that song makes me feel, it's always made me feel so peaceful. Peaceful? Really? Yeah. That's good, though. In a sort of, like, a cathartic release kind of way. I, okay, I see that, yeah. There's so much buildup of just pure exaltation and just, again, just this beautiful sense of self and personal accomplishment. You just feel so good and secure within yourself when you listen to that song. It's funny, though, because for you, it's a cathartic, calming song. And for me, for a while, it was one of my go-to hype songs. Like, it got me pumped up. Yeah. Almost almost like, I'm ready to get up there, get in the ring, fight, like... It, yeah, it used to be one of my gym songs, like, when I when I would run, or not run, huh, who runs? Uh-huh. Mm. But it, it used to be a song that got me energized, and it was, I don't know, it's, it's also another thematic. They're very good at grandiose song arrangements. I really like that about them. For me, what I think it is about the song that just makes me feel so peaceful is I guess it kind of it reminds me to not discredit my own ability yeah you know he's just like we're the kings and queens of promise how do you not feel good about yourself when someone's like exactly you're a queen you're a king 
embrace it, live your life as such. For me, when I listen to that song, time slows down a bit. Specifically, like, towards the end. It just all kind of just, like, see the way he just, like, screams out the last few, like, we are the kings, we are the queens. It, mm -hmm. he, he brings this sort of suspense to it all. Oh, he does. That and just the, sh the sort of triumphant... Oh, <laughs> yeah, the chorus, the the yeah, chorus in the just background, the, oh. and then when you add in the fact that those voices are all fans, right? Because that's the thing that also was so great about Thirty Seconds to Mars for me is that, especially at that point in their career, their fan base was so strong and tight-knit. It was a community, and it was, it was incredible to be a part of that. Um, it, it was like, it was like Jared Leto and Shannon Leto and Tomo Malikovic, they created this family, and they let all of us into it, and you didn't have to feel isolated because you always had those people standing beside you, metaphorically speaking, not actually, but I mean, through through in your heart, yeah, in your heart through. My love of 30 Seconds to Mars, I was able to connect with all different kinds of people. I, there was a freshman at my high school when I was a senior that I ended up becoming friends with because she saw my triad necklace and mm -hmm. she was a 30 Seconds to Mars fan too. And Aww. from that moment on, like... Every time I saw her, I was, like, super happy, and she was super happy, and, like, that was, that was it, that's, like. That's wholesome. It was, that is wholesome content. <laughs> Very few times in my life have I been in a fan community like that, where I felt like I was actually involved, and a part of something bigger than myself. And that's what... That's why when it comes to, like, all these boy band fans and, like, all these pop... pop artist fans and stuff, that's why mm -hmm. as... as fun as it can be to be like, oh, they're so insane, I... I, I understand where they're coming from, yeah. Because I was there, too, just for a different group. Yeah. And I mean, I think yeah. I think we've all been there. Yeah, we all have it. And I think it's important to always remember that time in your life, because I think that it, it was important to you for a reason. And yeah. I think keeping that in mind also helps you connect to all the other people in your life that are maybe just as attached to other things. And mm -hmm. it helps you understand those people when you're able to look at, look at the artists that they love and understand them. Yeah, I agree. A Hundred Sons is a really great song. Um, probably slept on because it's not very long. But it's honestly one of my favorites on the album because it's really simple and it's very pure. And it's it was a song that really helped me put things into perspective about life and just the question of existence. Not to get too deep, but it's just... It's really simple. It's just like, I believe in nothing. 
and it's a nihilism that I hadn't yet confronted in my life. And so Ooh. to hear it put out so beautifully by Jared Leto was a really important moment for me in terms of sorting out what I believed at the time just about what it means to be alive and what it means to be human. It's a very existential song. Yeah, I'll I'll give him that. I mean, I know the joke is basically that nowadays it's like, oh yeah, someone took entry to philosophy and like that's... <laughs> you have 30 seconds to Mars. But honestly, they they capture it pretty well. You know, all jokes aside, like they they do a very good job of being introspective when they want to be. I I do want to mention that Sting <laughs> rears his head yet again. <laughs> in that they had an EP, I forgot which EP it was, but they cover "Message in a Bottle." Oh, that sounds amazing. It actually does. I feel like I feel like I'd probably enjoy it, but I just thought it was. I was just like, Sting! <laughs> You've returned. <laughs> Six degrees of separation. <laughs> Favorite songs? I'll go first, because mine's really easy. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be that fan and say The mm-hmm. Kill, <laughs> Kings and Queens, mm-hmm. and Closer to the Edge. My favorites. Yeah, you can have more than three. I just chose three because those were like... I know for a fact those are my top three. Well, Nine of the Hunter and Battle of One are definitely favorites because those are the ones that really held my hand through a lot of tough situations. Then I would have to say Alibi. Ooh, good one. Because I've cried to that song a lot. Oh, no. In in true emo fashion, I've cried a lot to that song. And then I'm going to throw in a wild card with Buddha for Mary, because it's a jam. <laughs> That's not a wild card. You raved about it. <laughs> it's such a jam. It's such a jam. <laughs> An oldie it, but a goodie. It is. It is. And I love that we've uncovered their secret pattern. That is the highlight of this podcast episode for me. <laughs> the evolution continues. I love continues. it. Yeah. All right. Well, we did it. This is it. We finished. We did it. And may I say, it has once again been an honor, because because uh, this one was a kind of a touching episode, and I thought it was really sweet. This is the band for me. They saved my life. Regardless of how anybody feels about anything related to 30 Seconds to Mars, they were there for me when I personally felt like no one else was. And for that, I will always have a very, very, very big place in my heart for them. This was an episode I was looking forward to doing because it's just, it's my one way that I have to thank them. It may not be enough, but it's a start. So thanks, guys. Well said. You saved my life, and I don't want to start crying, so I'm not going to talk anymore oh no oh no all right well that was a beautiful and moving episode i think and would you all no never mind not gonna go that route Uh, would you all agree no (laughs) i was gonna say would you join me in a round of applause (laughs) thank you moving on (laughs) but now it's time for everyone's new favorite segment up and comers yeah who do we have this week? I'm actually okay. Real, real talk. Uh, the 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 comedy thing is coming off for a little bit. Um, I'm really excited to talk about this new artist because I've actually been a fan of them since 2014. Yeah. The artist uh, that I have picked this week for the up and comer segment is Cosmo Sheldrake, and some of you might actually know this person. He put out a really popular single back in the day called "The Moss." Which was so good. It was so fun. Yeah, you remember. You remember. I couldn't shut up about it. It was great. And 
He's just put out his first debut album. His debut album came out April 6th of this year, and it's called The Much Much How How and I, which sounds like a tongue twister. <laughs> but it's honestly, it's honestly so well done. If you're a fan of um, unique and really elaborate and and almost ethereal sounding music check him out part okay i'm gonna come out and just say that my favorite thing about him as an artist is that he uh he references a lot of literature and poetry and fairy tales and nursery rhymes even and i i eat that up (laughs) as you know by now so check out cosmo sheldrake if you're looking for some good songs as to where to start, obviously, in my opinion, start with The Moss. That's one of my favorites. Then I would probably say check out um, Come Along and uh, let's say Wriggle. There. Honestly, though, the whole album is really, really good. So, so check it out. Yeah. And, oh, if you want to follow him on Twitter and Instagram, he is at Cosmo Sheldrake, and on Facebook, he's at Cosmo Sheldrake Music. So go follow him, listen to his music, and if you like it, tell him that we sent you. Yes, yes. So who do you have for us this week? This week, I also have an artist that I've known about for a while. The artist that I have chosen is Nightbeds. Night Ooh. Beds I discovered in 2015. I remember stumbling on their song Me, Liquor, and God. Oh! Yeah. I know that! Yeah. yeah, I heard that song and because I was very intrigued by the title. And I loved it. Their Nightbeds is an interesting artist because their first album is actually more of a folk album, but their yeah. second album that they did, Ivy Wild, which is the album I first heard, is this really interesting experimental R and B kind of album. It's mm-hmm. so different from their first record, but both records are so well done. And even though Ivy Wild does have this sort of experimental R&B foothold, it also sprinkles in some of Nightbeds' folk roots, which I think is really, really cool and very compelling to hear in an artist. Like, Nightbeds just take so many risks on all of their songs. It's so awesome because you don't really hear just pure unbridled creativity anymore in music sometimes like Mm -hmm. a lot a lot of music sometimes just feels so produced and meticulous and thought out and put together but when you listen to night beds it just feels like this wash of expression and creativity and emotion and it's so cool. I I think I my favorite song is probably Swave. Either Swave or Nine to Six Slackjaw. Both of those songs are bangers, but I honestly can name like at least five other songs off of I Be Wild that are just incredible. And Nightbeds just released an EP, too, called Dear Jewel. It came out in May 14th of this year. So you can listen to that, too. You should definitely check it out. There's a cover of Just Like Heaven by The Cure on it. So please, please, please listen to Nightbeds because I love them and I don't know why more people aren't talking about them. If you want to follow them, they're not super active on socials, but they do have a Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Twitter and Facebook is at Night 
beds. And Instagram is at night underscore beds. So you can follow them there. If you do, let them know Rhapsody and Reverie sent you. Um, tweet about them. Tell all your friends. Tell your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, your nieces, your nephews, the weird neighbor down the street who never wears any pants. Like, tell everybody. Wow. Don't tell him, maybe. <laughs> tell everybody. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, again, as always, if you have music you want us to listen to, send it our way. We love new music. And yeah. So we only have two episodes left of season one. So if you're not caught up already, now's the time. Now that we're done with the episode. Thank you yeah. so much for listening to episode 13 of Rhapsody and Reverie. Thank you so thank you. much. Thank you. We love doing this. Thank you. So thank you for listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you like us, please follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Podbean, and check our website for announcements because you don't want to miss it when the next episode drops. Every Monday. Also, you can listen to us on YouTube now as well. So yeah! So if that's your flavor, go ahead, do that, subscribe to us there, and send it to your friends. Please, on, on whatever form you listen to us on, leave a comment, leave a review, um, tell us what you like, what you don't like, Tell us that we're perfect and that we should never change. Or tell us that we're awful and we should just change everything. Be honest. Open your hearts yeah. to us. And we are listening. Let us know what your favorite 30 Seconds to Mars songs are if you have them. I want to know. I'm curious. I'm genuinely yeah. curious to know who likes what about. Yeah, if there's a kind of music that we've been talking about that you are really feeling... Let us know. And if you have new artists that you think that we should listen to to talk about in either the up-and-comer segment or the featured artist segment, send them our way. Because we are always looking for great new music. But yeah, other than that, the last thing that we have to do is hint at next week's episode. So hint master. Yes! What you got for us? Ah! I got nothing. What is next week? All right, Master, what's the hint? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Give me a minute. Okay, Hitmaster, go. Okay. Their name was slang in magazines for drive-in theaters because it's hot for teens. Wow, you actually rhymed. I'm proud of you. I'm proud you got that out there. Should we repeat the hint? Should repeat we repeat the hint? the hint? Okay, so their name comes from um, magazine slang that referred to drive-in theaters because uh, teens thought it was hot. That's your hint, guys. That's your Figure hint. If you know the answer, tune in next week for Wednesday. Ge oh, no, not next week. This week. For Wednesday guest day. And shoot your shot if you get it right. Sebastian. Go for that three-peat. Go for that three-peat. You will get something special if you guess correct. <laughs> it, there's no way to say that. That sounds good. but <laughs> you, I don't know. You'll get a prize or something. You'll get a prize. That sounds yeah. better. Well, we'll work it out. <sighs> well, that's it for us, ladies and germs. Was it a dream? Who knows? We're closer to the edge of insanity with every episode. Sometimes I feel like a stranger in a strange land in this normal life we live. My head's up in the air. Perhaps in the middle of a hurricane. But this is the story of our lives. A beautiful mm. lie it is. Wow. In the city of angels... We will search and destroy <laughs> a modern myth. Remember, 
It's do or die on this bitch of an earth. Remember, you are kings and queens, and this is war. So welcome to the universe. <laughs> that was actually good. I hate that we're getting better at this. Long live the puns. 